In a recent shift, I was sitting out at the nurse's station and one of my buddies who was in a room called out for help. I walked in and assessed the scene. I could see a baby in the warmer who was gray and not moving. I saw three of my buddies that I work with attending to the baby. I saw a mom in stirrups and so I gathered that we had just delivered and baby was not transitioning well. First thing I did was assess what needs my buddies had who were helping the baby. And I knew that this baby needed some help from the NICU, so I buzzed the NICU people. The next thing that I did was after I knew that my buddies at the warmer had the baby, I went directly over to the mom. And I said, hey, my name is Jen. I figure if I can see your biscuit in the wind, you need to know exactly what my name is. And I'm here to narrate all the things that you're seeing happening over there. She looked over at me and she said, I know you. I said, well, good. Now we're already friends. Now let me tell you what I see. I said, sometimes it's really hard work to go from being an indoor cat to an outdoor cat. And sometimes babies need a little bit of help. And I'm a really good eavesdropper. So I'm going to tell you all the things that I see and I hear and translate them so you understand exactly what's going on. As each of the NICU team came in, um, I told her exactly who they were and what they were there to do. I said, you see that lady right there with the bun on top of her head? I said, that's my friend Tisa. She works in the NICU. She's been a nurse for such a long time. She knows exactly what she's doing. I said, you see that tall, lanky guy right there? That's the neonatologist. And I said, you see how he's kind of standing back a little bit and kind of watching what's going on? I said, that's because your baby is breathing on her own, which is fantastic. But he's trying to see if she needs a little bit of extra help. You see that yellow number right there? It's in the 80s right now. So that's what he's looking at right now. He sees that she's breathing on her own, but she might need a little extra help. You see how Tisa just grabbed that little mask right there and put it to her face? That tells me that your baby is able to breathe on her own, but they're just giving her a little extra oxygen just to support her. Every single person over there, I would have hand-picked to take care of my baby. What is that sweet girl's name besides grounded for scaring her mama like that? That is a beautiful name. Hey, Dad, you want to go over there and you can get some pictures for Mom so she can see what she looks like? This girl was so scared. And so I took the baby blanket that was laying on her chest that still had some of her baby's goobies on it. I took the corner of it and each tear that fell, I just dabbed it away. She said, I'm so scared. I said, that is so normal. I would be too. But I want you to look at me. Do I look scared? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you borrow some of my not scaredness because I trust every single one of those people over there. And in just a second, that team over there is going to make a decision. They're going to decide whether she's acting right enough to hang out down here. I want her to stay down here. I do too, and so do they. But if she does need a little bit extra help, that's the team that she needs. And they're only gonna take her if they really think she needs some help. Because their goal is to get her right back over on your chest. Now at this point, the dad had brought over his phone because he had taken a picture of the baby. And I took that phone and I zoomed in to each part of the picture so I could show her what I was seeing that reassured me about her baby. I said, do you see? Look at these pink cheeks. Do you see how pink those cheeks are? That is such a good sign. We like pink cheeks. Baby looks so much better than whenever I first walked in. They eventually were able to bring the baby back over to mom and put her on her chest, hoping that some skin to skin would help her to get her life together. And she was like, well, how will we know if she's not doing okay? I told her some things that we look for to see if baby's doing okay, but then I also went and grabbed a portable pulse ox to give her some peace of mind. And that sassy girl eventually needed some help from the NICU and did have to go up, but mom did get to snuggle her first. I say all that to say, the second most important role, other than the team who is dealing with the emergency, is the person who can translate what is happening as it happens. And not just given the play-by-play -play hey, your baby's oxygen sucks, uh, they're going to put a mask over her face, but also giving the reassuring parts of the story. Because as all this is happening, a story is already being told in her mind that will be replayed for years. And if we don't help narrate that story into a positive situation, it will always be traumatic. And it probably still will be scary for her to look back on, but I sincerely hope that having somebody right by her side 
rubbing her leg, wiping her tears, and explaining to her everything that was happening as it was happening helps this to imprint as not as of a traumatic event as it could have been without.